Humanoid Slow and IHL share some obvious common features. They pursue the same general objective to protect human beings and human dignity. This object means that they both have some distinct features from the perspective of the law of treaties, where obligations are usually reciprocal. For instance, a consequence of the non-reciprocity of IHL conventions is that a violation of an IHL convention by one state does not give its enemy a right to violate the same convention as would be normally the case in, for example, a trade treaty. We'll be looking at this issue in greater depth when we come to consider the IHL sources in the next chapter. More generally, the content of both legal regimes is often similar. Take, for example, the basic protection afforded to non-combatants under Common Article 3 to the four Geneva Conventions. As we'll see in detail later, Common Article 3 prohibits murder, mutilation, torture, taking of hostages, cruel and degrading treatment, as well as summary executions. Each of these acts is also prohibited under human rights law. That having been said, the difference between human rights law and IHL are far greater than their similarities. Their origin is different. As we know, modern IHL emerged in the second half of the 19th century, and its evolution is closely linked to the development of the International Committee of the Red Cross. The committee is strictly neutral. By contrast, modern human rights law developed after World War II under the influence of the United Nations, a political body. On a more technical level, human rights law and IHL have a different scope of application. In terms of whom they apply to, IHL provides individuals with different kind of protection depending on the category to which they belong. For example, there are specific rules for sick and wounded people, prisoners of war, and civilian or civilian population. Human rights law does not make any equivalent distinctions. It protects anybody regardless of ear, his or her status. There is another significant difference. As we will show in detail later, IHL binds not only states, but also non-state actors, particularly armed groups. By contrast, the application of human rights law to non-state actors is very controversial. The majority view is that it does not apply to non-state actors, especially to armed groups. There are also differences in where the law applies. IHL applies in any armed conflict, regardless of where they take place, while human rights law only applies to persons who are under the jurisdiction or control of the states in question. Another significant difference is the fact that the specific rules of IHL that apply to a particular conflict will depend on the nature of that conflict. As we have mentioned, the whole body of IHL applies in an international armed conflict, while only some rules apply in non-international armed conflicts. There is no such a distinction under human rights law, except that states may derogate to some human rights when their survival is at stake. The final and one of the most important differences concerns the existence of international bodies charged with interpreting or applying the legal rules. Under IHL, there is no judicial or political body that is specifically in charge of monitoring the application of IHL and sanctioning violations. It is true that international criminal tribunals, such as the International Criminal Court, are competent to try individuals for serious violations of IHL and therefore may sanction those violations. 
but those jurisdictions are not specific to IHL and extend into areas not covered by IHL. International criminal tribunals do not judge states and do not sanction all IHL violations, but a set of specific serious violations referred to as war crimes. It is also true, as we will see that later, that some specific mechanisms for implementing IHL exist, such as the International Committee of the Red Cross. However, those mechanisms are not judicial mechanisms and are not designed to sanction IHL violations. By contrast, there are several specific political and judicial bodies that have been established in order to interpret, apply and develop human rights law. 